This webinar, uh, just to introduce, my name is Gary Collins. I'm the Tuco project manager from the Access Group um, for Tuco Online. Uh, this webinar is to introduce the stock system that you get as part of the Tuco agreement and explain how, busy, how this will impact you and obviously the benefits you'll get from using the system itself. At the end of uh, the webinar, please feel free to uh, post any questions in the comments box and we'll answer them as best we can. Um, uh, and we'll take a look at the system now. So the idea of this uh, webinar is to basically look at the stock system itself and see how it can benefit you and your system. Uh, the key thing is, is it is real time so that as you're selling products on your EPOS system, as long as that integration is in place, then it will be reducing your stock in the background on a nightly feed. And obviously then you'll be able to get reporting in the background that advises uh, trends of stuff, waste, wastage that takes place and how you can all, uh, record that into the system. So within the system itself, um, all the stock modules uh, are placed within the admin area of Your Wizard uh, down the left hand side. And there's a couple of monitors uh, that we look at in the system itself. So firstly, we have the advanced stock controls, which we will look at shortly. We also have the way to record our wastage and it also integrates with our flash reports to be able to look on the GPs and obviously almost like a mini PL within our system. So the first thing I'm going to look at is how we record waste within our system itself. So first of all, we look at click on a waste and we go to waste monitoring and it's as simple as being able to record in two different methods in my system itself. But again, we would build that to your requirements. So one I've got through my EPOS system and one I've got through back of house. The idea is recording waste, you will be able to then record either by item or produced item. So anything that you produce in your kitchens that you may waste, you'll be able to record that through here. That will then feed through into your stock system and actually we'll be able to give you a figure of how much that's being wasted for. So when it comes to the stock uh, system itself, we build that based on your outlets and however you purchase, uh, purchase those goods and even how you transfer them. So if you purchase goods into a direct uh, centralized store and then the units requisition that stock away from the centralized store, then we would set that up in that same way. You would also be able to segregate that stock into different types of categories, i.e. food, beverage, consumables, disposables, so that you can then report on them as individuals, um, stock takes or as a global across your units themselves. So for this example, I have one stock take set up. Um, in which case this is my for my centralized store and I can see the date range which you would specify. So your opening stock takes would always be based on your last closing stock takes. Stock takes. As you purchase your goods, those stock takes are those purchases are automatically delivered into your stock. Uh, you can have it that you can set that as a manual process if you wish, uh, but we do recommend setting it as automated as possible. When we go into do our stock takes, you have the ability to list your products or see the products that you purchased within that area. Um, on the right hand side, as you will see, we have the pack size that you're meant to be counting in. The closing count is what we would enter in to say this is what our closing count figure is. And we do have the ability to hide the closing count, uh, the expected closing count. As you can see on my screen, it's classed as a blind count, but you do have the ability to actually open that up and allow the users to see what they should have. We can also produce the count sheets as well. So you can see here, we can export the PDF count sheets. And part of these count sheets is then you'll be able to give that to your users and be able to then send them away to be able to count that. We can also in a PDF format, but we can also do that in an Excel format. So in the import export section, we can export those into CSV, allow the users to fill those in on a tablet um, and then complete those. And then we can import those back again in again. Again, if a user is using a tablet, they will be able to import the stock counts directly into this column here. The way the stock service system works is you have the ability to look at either all products, which basically means any product that potentially that user may purchase will be in the stock count sheets. But we also have the uh, direction of active products. So that will look at anything that's been purchased, anything that's been sold or consumed or wasted, in the system, be it via a recipe that's been produced and it contains that ingredient. If you put in a closing count of zero twice in two stock periods, 
that product will disappear off your stock sheets. So it makes your stock sheets actually more active and lower and less products appearing. So the users won't be then scrolling through pages and pages of products that actually they don't purchase anymore. Once we've entered in our closing counts on the right hand side, we will then be able to go into our outlet summary. Our outlet summary will then give us a breakdown of everything to do with that stock take. They'd be the values of the products that have been purchased. Um, looking at also your till revenue that you're coming in, you will also then see the value of your goods here, your GP that you're expecting. And as we scroll down, you will see my till sales are feeding in here. We can have revenue adjustments, which will primarily be used by the finance team. So if there is a revenue adjustment, for instance, till discrepancies and things like that, we don't get those figures, but you would be able to record those if you wish. You would allow to be able to put adjustments in. So any manual adjustments would be able to be applied. We would also be able to record manual waste into the stock takes as well. But if you have a EPOS waste feeding in, we would also be able to feed that in as well. On the right hand side, we would then also see our last closing stock counts of whatever our last closing stock was that we locked it on. We then take into account anything that's been re-evaluated. So when your price changes change throughout the stock period, we will then present to you the figure of what that stock is now worth based on that new cost price of those products. You can look at the changes that have been taken to place, but we will re-evaluate stock based on that. You will then see what your new evaluation stock would be, any deliveries that you've done in that period, any stock returns that you've done to your suppliers, any transfers in from other departments or centralized stores, and again, any transfers out of those products. And if you see the icon changes, which means we will then be able to look at those products and see what was actually taken. So you can see here, this is the products that were actually requisitioned as part of that, that transfer. Okay. As we scroll down even further, you can then see nominal adjustments, which again can be used by the finance teams to make a nominal adjustments for finance purposes. As we scroll down, we'll then see a theoretical actual closing cost count. Theoretical cost of sales, so basically your cost of sales and any difference that's taking place in there. <laughs> Underneath that, we will then be able to see any explained allowances, explained wastage and also auto consumed. Auto consumed will look at anything that you monitor so you can record those products and make them as auto consumed. So, for instance, if you have sources that are sat on a table in a restaurant and you don't want your uh, users or your managers to be able to count those stocks on the tables, but you still want them to be able to count those stock that's in the store. So then anything that is a variance would then class as auto consumed. Again, as part of the setup, you would set those particular products yourself the users won't be able to validate that or change those. After everything that's been recorded and closed in the system, you would then be able to get an unexplained variance. What that unexplained variance will do is then give you a breakdown of what that product is affecting or the, that figure. So that will then look at anything where you've not recorded it, not sold it, not wasted it, not recorded a closing count or any returns or anything of like that. And it will give you a figure to say, well, this is the figure that is missing. So that will then give you a breakdown of the products that are missing from that unexplained. Underneath that, we'll then have the adjustments, uh, any excluded adjustments. So you can then exclude certain adjustments and wastage and unassigned allowances if you wish. We'll then be able to see the value of invoices and stock values that have been uh, recorded. So any differences in those. And if we scroll to the top of the screen, we will then be able to get what is called a unit summary. So this is an outlet summary. So this is looking at actually my food stock. Against the unit itself, we would then be able to get a breakdown of in the, this particular case, I only have one store, but you may have different stores set up for things like food, beverage, cleaning, disposables, which are classed as different outlet stocks. And that way you'd be able to get a breakdown of overall the stock take result for your particular unit or an individual stock take itself. Next to that, we'd also see you have consume consumption. In this consumption section, you will then be able to see every single product that you've recorded account against and any movement that's taken place. So if we look at these leaks that are loose, I can sell by the kilo at £1.46. I can see that my actual closing count is here, my value of that, what the variance is, and I can also see a percentage against that. If I click on the magnifying glass against that product, 
I will then be able to see the individual products that have been purchased. So I can see what my starting count was, what my deliveries have been in that period, and also what any sales that have been. And if there was any wastage on this particular product, it would also then have a wastage section with the say this product has been wasted. So in the breakdown of every single product, you will be able to look at the full movement of anything that's taken place within that product. And again, if that product is linked to a recipe, i.e. I can see that this product here is the recipe for it, I can see the individual quantities that have been reduced as part of that stock tape. What will then help with that is it will be able to identify if a recipe contains a product that actually you're serving too much as a portion. So it basically then looks at your portion controls for those products. You will then be able to order any stock takes that take place. So you'll be able to see any adjustments that taken place. So when a user has recorded anything in the system, either changes or anything like that against the stock take or against our product itself. So I can see here what my opening was, my closing consumed, what the variants are, so that everything that's been delivered in. And as I scroll down, I can see every bit of movement that's taken place for this particular product within the system. Wherever you see an underlined product or underlined link, you will be able to click on that and actually look at the order for that particular product. So I can see here cakes and briskets, for instance, in this case. And this particular product will drill down even further for every single product that's taken place. If I looked back at my consumption, and then I went back to my leaks that we just looked at. So I'll click on these lemons, for instance. As I scroll down, I can see that each of these will be what delivered in as part of this order. I can then click on that link if I wish, and then it will open up in another page and actually take you directly to the order for that product that you purchased at that point. So if you do look down that list and you think, well, that doesn't look quite right, you will be able to go directly to the order and actually validate it and check it to make sure that somebody's not made a mistake. Once the users are happy with the stock, they will then be able to request a lock on that stock. And as long as the warnings that are in the warning section have all been met, so in this case, I can't lock my stock because there's a couple of warnings that I have, the users will only be able to lock once these uh, issues are resolved. Most of these issues are already resolved as part of the setup, so these won't highlight. But things like orders not delivered is a priori priority to make sure that every single order is delivered into the system to make sure it's delivered into stock. Once the user is happy at that point, they will then be able to request that this stock is locked, in which case a lock button will appear at the top of the screen, and they will be able to submit that as a request to be locked. That would then notify a manager or department manager and give them the stock set, stock tape results. They will be able to look at that, validate it themselves before the final lock takes place. So that it, And if, again, if they weren't happy with the result, they'll be able to ask that user to almost unlock that stock send it back to the user and say, correct those results. So that is the stock system itself. Just to also explain that every single stock take that takes place in the system, you will be able to get a unit reports, but also you'll be able to get full cost and group reports. So you will be able to look across your whole university and be able to look at those particular reports and actually see, okay, I want to see the overall stock result for beverage across the whole of my campus, or as an individual down to food, and again, overall result across the whole campus for food, beverage, and whatever else the stock page you may perform. So that will give you a breakdown. Every single one of these group reports, again, can be uh, uh, built to your requirements based on your uh, setup. So you'll be able to set up date ranges or financial periods, and you can export that into a different formats. And again, cost breakdowns, and then there's individual unit reports. So simply things like history of stock movement will allow you to look at any transfers that take place between units and be able to see if that's been approved or not approved. Part of stock requisitions is you'll be able to request stock from different locations, and that will transfer that stock across along with the cost, but also it can be approved. So stock doesn't get moved by mistake or in, pro in ways that users could either hide stock it has to be approved at the other transitioning locations. So I know that was a short demonstration into the stock, but do anybody have any questions? I can't see anything that's populated in at the moment, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to post one. Okay, um, we will send out a, a, an email later on uh, just to see how everything, go, everything went. And if you do have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to contact us. Um, 
we are gladly talk about the system itself. I can see a few people in there that we've spoken to in the past. And obviously we have got a couple of calls over the next few weeks that were people that we can speak to. So again, if you do have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to ask. And thank you very much for watching.